Metro Deconstruction go shopping in Stevenage. Built Robotics can convert any excavator to remote control operation. And Doosan lifts the lid on its latest range of excavators. All that and more on the Weekend Wrap. It's that time of year when all our collective thoughts turn to all things retail. So imagine you're off to the shops. What do you take with you? Your wallet or your purse, obviously. A face mask, well, hopefully. Uh, a wife who apparently knows the top, bottom and shoe sizes of pretty much everyone she's ever met. That's useful as well. But if you're Metro Deconstruction, you take with you, a, <laughs> you apparently take with you, a couple of sucking great excavators. <laughs> It's that time of year when our collective thoughts turn to Turkey. But since this isn't the Good Food Network, when we think of Turkey, we do so in a rather different way. But don't worry, we're still going large and you're still going to get all the trimmings. So let's take a look at the largest excavator in Turkey. Terry Quornby has spent the past half century working in the field of demolition. He rose through the ranks to become the president of the Institute of Demolition Engineers while gaining a reputation for his forthright manner and a willingness to express his opinion. We decided that opinion required a platform and this new show is that platform. 
During this pilot episode, Terry Cornby discusses the impending demise of diesel. You can't be diesel. There, there isn't another alternative yet. There isn't another technology. The new National Emergency Services Support Task Force. Why has it taken so long to get to this stage? Industry competence cards. How good the education is behind that card is debatable. And his reaction to the ongoing investigation into alleged collusion within the UK demolition industry. If anybody or any organisation brings the institute into disrepute, then they'll be dismissed. So this is Dr Terry Cornby. The surgery is now in session. Allow me, if you will, to very quickly draw some comparisons between two specialist disciplines from within the construction sector. The piling sector is currently impacted by a severe skills shortage. Demolition is currently impacted by a severe skill shortage. The piling sector is struggling to attract new entrants. Demolition is struggling to attract new entrants. The piling sector has an ageing workforce. Demolition has an ageing workforce. Training within the piling sector is not suited to classroom learning. I think you know where I'm going with this. Training within the demolition industry is not suited to classroom training either. The piling sector has a new provisional competence card that can be gained by spending time on a simulator. The demolition industry has a... No, no we don't have one of those. New entrants to the piling sector are being offered the opportunity to gain a provisional yellow card with 70 hours experience on a simulator, a simulated end test and a CPCS theory test. The card is free of charge. Meanwhile, the UK demolition industry has had access to simulators for years now. The National Demolition Training Group is now on its second simulator. The first one is still in use, as I understand, at the headquarters of AR Demolition. But a provisional card based purely upon simulator hours is sadly lacking here in the field of demolition. Why? Is it because a piling simulator is easier and more straightforward? No. In fact, it's probably more complex. Is it because the Federation of Piling Specialists are somehow more advanced than the National Demolition Training Group? Nope. That's not it either. The truth is that major uh, infrastructure projects such as HS2 are dependent upon piling. And the big name contractors on projects like HS2 are extremely wealthy, extremely vocal, and they have the ear of government. For, so for now at least, what is good for the piling goose is not necessarily good for the demolition gander. I think we can all agree that remote control and autonomous equipment will have a role to play in the future of demolition and construction. To what degree, no one really knows, and we can't actually predict when it's going to arrive either. But that technology exists today, and it doesn't necessarily require the investment in a dedicated remotely controlled machine either. Take a look at this from Built Robotics in the States. We build the same way our grandparents did with our own two hands. But the tools in our hands change. Built Robotics has developed the most advanced tool available on any job site today, the Exosystem. It transforms any excavator into a fully autonomous robot made to dig the earth. It's powered by a liquid-cooled computer with sub-centimeter RTK GPS, high-efficiency solar panels, an all-weather, all-terrain design. And you can easily switch from manual to AI mode with a flick of a switch. But most importantly, it can dig. Does the idea of an 80,000-pound robot scare you a little? You'd be crazy if it didn't. That's why we've developed an eight-layer safety system with 360-degree camera coverage, proximity radar, 110 decibel safety alarms, ultra-bright LEDs, high-vis barriers, a digital geofence, and hardwired and wireless emergency stops. Because when it comes to safety, more is more. We're here because of the builders who came before us. They created the world we live in, our roads, 
our cities, our homes. And when they needed a tool to overcome a new challenge, they invented it. Now, it's our turn. At the top of the show, we brought you some footage of the machines at the top end of the new, the new Doosant DX-7 excavator range. Now it's time to look at something a little bit smaller and perhaps a little bit newer as well. Take a look at this. Avocate. I'm 